Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Luke chapter 17, and I'm going to start at verse 11. And the he that's being spoken of here is Jesus, and this is what it says. It says, And it came about while he was on the way to Jerusalem that he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a certain village, there met him ten leprous men who stood at a distance. And they raised the voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And it came about that as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but the nine? Where are they? When were none found who turned back to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Pray with me. Lord, oh, for a, a faith, a faith that's exercised, that's demonstrated through the gratitude of a, of a heart, Lord, that's the kind of faith that you desire. Help it grow within us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Read a story. It said Mark Twain, when he was at the height of his career, was earning just back then what was an incredible sum, $5 a word, for the articles that he wrote for Harper's Weekly. Well, one joker wrote him a letter. And he enclosed in the letter a $5 bill and said, Dear Mr. Twain, please send a good word. <laughs> Mark Twain took a single sheet of paper and wrote, Thanks, and mailed it back to the fellow. <laughs> well, thanks is a good word. Thanks is the, the, the reason we've got a story here today. That it was the one who turned back to give thanks. Is the one who exercised the faith that, that, that Jesus pointed to, the faith that, that Jesus showed as an example here. Thanks is a good word. Thanks is, is a very good word. And that's what I want to talk about today. In this story, it was between Galilee and Samaria that Jesus and his disciples were walking. And that's just code for they were in the middle of the boondocks. They were out in the middle of nowhere. That's one way we know they were in the middle of nowhere. The other way we know they were in the middle of nowhere is there met them ten leprous men, is what the Scripture tells us. Well, lepers were pushed out of their family, not by the family, but by law. And not only were they pushed out of their families, they were pushed out of their communities, out of their towns, out of their cities, by law. They were pushed out to be alone, and if they got within side of someone else, law required that they cover their mouths and shout, unclean, unclean. Six feet was way too close. Ten of them found each other, 
out in the middle of the boondocks, in the middle of nowhere, and they cried out to Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. In other words, don't you care? And the question came back with a resounding yes. He said, go show yourselves to the priest. And it was while they were on their way that they were cleansed. While they were on their way that they were cleansed. But the story isn't just about the nine who, or the ten who were cleansed. It was about the one who turned back to give thanks. And to that one, Jesus says, your faith has made you well. That thanks, the word of thanks, it's a mark of faith. It's the language of faith for the Christian. And that's what I want to talk about. Give thanks. Give thanks where you are. Sarah Brethnock wrote a little book called Simple Abundance. And in the book, she talks about there was a time in her life where she was angry. She was envious. She was a workaholic. She was a perfectionist. That she compared herself to others. And she was resentful about what was missing. That it got so bad in her life. One time, she sat down to, to write out what she was thankful for. And she was, wrote page after page over 150 things that she was thankful for. Well, her life didn't just suddenly change because she wrote out 150 things she was thankful for. But she knew that something in her had shifted. So she made a, a decision, a choice, that at that point every day to write out five things at the end of the day. Write five things that she was thankful for from that day. And she goes on to say that, that her life began to change. It began to transform day by day, little by little, right where she was. Lisa Truett Irby from Cleveland, Tennessee, tells a story about a little girl that she was reading with one-on-one. -on -one, that she was helping the six-year-old read, and as the six-year-old came to a new word, she, were, she would help her with it. Well, the six-year-old encountered the words thank you for the first time and she stopped when she saw the words and so Lisa was trying to help her on so she said thank well the little girl didn't keep reading so she said it with a little more emphasis thank and that's when the little girl said I am thanking I am thanking well southern accent or not thanking and thinking aren't the same thing there's a distance between thinking and thanking Thanking is what you do. Thanking is a demonstration. It's an action. And this is what the Apostle Paul says, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through Him to God the Father. That in all that you do, by word or deed, that it's, 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 it's in the thanks that's demonstrated by the things that we do. It's the thanks. It's the praise. It's the worship that makes us whole. It's the act of faith that begins to transform us. Give thanks where you are. But the second thing that I wanted to talk about this morning is not only give thanks where you are, but give thanks where you've been. My sister and her family, years ago, spent a year in Scotland. Her husband was on a Fulbright scholarship, and the whole family went to Scotland. My sister would often take the kids to the nursing home. She's very musical. She would play piano, and the kids would sing. And sometimes the older adults in the nursing home would sing along, and sometimes they'd make requests. Well, one day, they finished a song, and there was... An, Older woman at the back of the room that shouted out, Spam, you know, the meat in a can. Well, she wasn't real sure if this was a part of a Monty Python skit or just what was going on. But she looked to the nurse, and the nurse just shrugged her shoulder. And the woman again said, Spam, and then began to make her way toward my sister until she was tugging on her sleeve and said, Spam, you gave us Spam. That's when my sister turned to the nurse, and the nurse said, Oh, during World War II, much of Scotland 
was starving. The Americans airlifted tons and tons of spam that allowed them to survive. She just found out you're an American and she wanted to thank you. Well, it wasn't thanks for my sister's sake. It was the thanks that that woman had to get off of her heart. It was the thanks that she, she had to express, that she had to demonstrate in some way. Now, this is a woman who lived through World War II. This is a woman who lived through, through near starvation. This is a woman who lived through the cruelty, who lived through the bitterness, who lived through the hardship of World War II. And I, I, ca I can't imagine the temptation to look back on that cruel and hard and bitter time and respond in cruel and hard and bitter ways. But that's not what she chose. Hebrews 2.18 says, for since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. Jesus knew what it was to be betrayed. He knew what it was to be treated cruelly. He knew the hardship. And he was tempted in that which he has suffered. But he overcame the temptation. And he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. He's able to come to the aid of, of, of you and me. Now, he doesn't change the past, but he does change the way that we look at it. That we can, can look back, and rather than seeing nothing but bitterness and hardship and being tempted to, to demonstrate that bitterness and that hardship, we can look back. And through the aid of the risen Christ, the past can be transformed. It can be changed into a means of, of gratitude, of thanks, to demonstrate where we've, where we've been. And to give that thanks. That's exactly what the Apostle Paul did. That he knew what it was to be shipwrecked. He knew what it was to be beaten. He knew what it was to be crushed with stones. He knew what it was to be imprisoned. And still, and still, after all that, in Philippians 4.13, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, he had reason to be bitter. Yes, he had reason to lash out in his hardship. But he knew that the living Christ the Holy Spirit lived through him that gave him power he didn't have on his own. That's the same Christ Jesus that lives in you and in me and gives us strength, strength we don't have to give thanks, to give thanks where we've been. Not only wanted to talk about give thanks where you are and give thanks where you've been, but the third thing that I wanted to talk about this morning is give thanks along the way. Barbara Scholes wrote an article for Christian Century. And in the article, she began to talk about her battle with cancer. And in that battle with cancer, she, she was healed, healed of her cancer. And in writing about both the battle and the healing, this is what she said. She said, when chemotherapy causes your hair to fall out and robs you of your energy and feel, fills your mouth with canker sores, you began to develop empathy with the lepers. There's no hiding the fact that you are diseased. Your cancer walks into the room before you do. And people who know better still flinch as they did before the lepers who were made to live outside the community who had to beg for survival. But after she was healed, she began to identify more with the one who turned back. This is what she says. She says, like the tenth leper... I never want to lose sight of the miracle of God's grace. Being grateful as I awaken to the gift of each day is the key. The gift of each day. That Jesus Christ has given a gift each day along the way for you and for me. It's what he did on the cross. He took all those things that would destroy us. He took the anger he took the perfectionism. 
He took the competitiveness. That he took all those things from the past, the suffering, the bitterness, the hardship. He took all those things, even disease and death, and he took away its sting. He nailed it to the cross, and he took away its power. He killed it once and for all, for you and for me. And when he rose from the grave on the third day, he gave you and me power that we don't have. Power. Power in every day, not just to think thankful things or feel thankful, but to demonstrate. To demonstrate in thanks every day along the way. This morning, my invitation is that maybe you are at that place that because of this pandemic, it's, 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 it's insulated us. It's insulated us from other people. And sometimes the demonstrative act, it requires, it qu- requires more of us to, to say that word of thanks. To, to do that, that act of, of gratitude. And that during this pandemic, that you've grown more inward. And maybe you've held on to the gratitude, thinking that thinking it or feeling it is enough. Faith in Jesus Christ calls us to more than that. It calls us to, to reach out in demonstrable ways, to demonstrate our gratitude. And it might be to a, a friend, a neighbor, a loved one, that, that you want to write a letter. Or it may be demonstrable ways to demonstrate our gratitude toward God. I know that's what we practice in worship every Sunday, but being at home, Sometimes that, that it insulates us. It insulates us from the time where we come together and, and reaching out and demonstrating our gratitude to God. Yes, in praise. Yes, in singing. And yes, in giving. In giving. Giving to God. Giving to others. Giving to neighbor. A gift a gift that demonstrates the gratitude. Join with me in prayer this morning. Let's pray. Jesus, this morning we know we need power we don't have. It may be that that we haven't been practicing gratitude. Oh, we might have felt it. We might have thought it. But we haven't been Demonstrating gratitude in word or deed or gift. Lord, use this day to be a day of a fresh start, a new beginning. Where you breathe your strength, your power through us and you come to our aid. We're tempted to do everything but give gratitude. But come to our aid. Come to our aid, Lord, and give us the strength we need to demonstrate that act of faith, that act of thanks. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. 
Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online, my hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life, and my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.